What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If it's your first time joining the show, welcome to the show. We got a good one for you today. Like my man Steve Harvey done say, it's Angela Johnson Reyes. Angela Johnson, so funny, been at it for a long time. Uh, we talk about her position in the biz, NAS, what she's up to next, and uh, that she's pregnant. She gonna be a mama soon. Almost popped on the show. Uh, so funny. Check her out. Check her special out. It's in the description below. Uh, and check me out. Me and Bob are on the road. Hey, we're on the road. Bad Friends Tour is all over the country. We're adding dates. Go to badfriendspod.com. Badfriendspod.com is where you to go to get them tickets. Uh, We're going to be all over uh, the place, and we're adding dates. I think we're going to... Where are we going to be? We're going to Florida, then San Diego, Riverside, four dates in Florida, Jacksonville, uh, St. Pete's, Orlando, Hollywood, then we go uh, San Diego, Riverside. Then we go up back to the East Coast, Jersey, New York, Baltimore, Philly. We're everywhere. Go to badfriendspod.com, badfriendspod.com. Enough rambling from me. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It's Angela Johnson. Angela Johnson Reyes. Yeah. I have to add the end now. But I like how you gave me the Angela, Spanish your ac- song. accent for the whitest parts of yeah. my names. And Angela, then- <laughs> Angela Johnson Reyes. Yes. <laughs> now, do you still go by Angela Johnson or do you say Angela Johnson Reyes always now? Both. I forget. Like, I, I try to include my married name. I didn't include it until, like, I was 10 years in married. Mm, I was mm. like, you know, he's earned it. Let me just yeah. throw it in. You he's get, proved he's going to stick prove, around. Make him prove that name. And then, so now I try to add it in to everything, but I, I forget. And I'll go, oh, Angela Johnson, Reyes, yeah, I'm married. But it has been Angela Johnson for so long, yeah. and the name is so catchy. Yeah. So Angela Johnson, Reyes, it's going to take some getting used to. It will, it But will. there, look, get used to it, America, and international <laughs> fans, because this is how it is now. It's hyphenated. Uh-huh. It, that always reminds me of the movie Big. I don't know if you, do you, ever, you, remember, you know the movie yeah. Big? Where she comes in the room and... She's like, it's Donaldson Hicks. Sometimes it's with the hyphen. Sometimes she spells the hyphen. And I always thought that was hilarious about people that combine last names because we got into that discussion. You Mm -hmm. know, my lady was like, do we want the last name? How do we do this? And we had a friend of ours who made a new last name. What? Like, they just combined like half of yours, half of mine? No, they legally went and picked a new last name that they liked. Stop it. Uh-huh. Stop. (laughs) Yes, they did. They did. Chartreuse. No. Uh, no, that's not it. But no. they did pick a real last name. <laughs> they picked a new last name together because they thought um, we're starting a new family, which I thought was kind of, they both kind of came from, uh, I don't know if they liked their families. Are they vegan? No, this no, no. sounds no, like no. a vegan thing. No, 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 no. They didn't okay. like their families. They okay. Did, one of them didn't have a relationship with their parents. The other one had kind of okay. a broken home. So they were like, we're starting a new. I like that. And what's wrong with that? I, I actually, I respect that. I think it's, I think that's the, I that's didn't the at first, but when you brought in the childhood trauma, I was like, I approve. Isn't that's that what fine. we all have? Yeah. Is exactly. that what we all suffer with? <laughs> Tremendously speaking of childhood trauma, can't wait to see what you do to this one. Yes. Huh? Let's so, see. What are we talking? A boy, a girl. girl. You're going to let it pick. You got to let it pick. <laughs> you got to let your baby pick these days. <laughs> She's going to start out a girl. Um, they will start out a girl. Th- they will. You watch your words over <laughs> here, man. This is LA. Now you're trying to get canceled. It's insane to think that that's a real thing. Got to let them choose. Well, not, I mean, not yet. Yeah, it's, no. It's going to be a little girl. She's full on a girl. And I'm going to guess her name right now Mirabelle. Uh, Sheila. Uh, um, uh, Pequeño. Uh, <laughs> you do you, do you know the name? Are you willing to say it or no? We don't have a name picked Good. yet. Good. But that's funny because my friend Mal Hall, he tours with you me. know I love Mal Hall. I love Mal. Love. Every time I talk to him, he gives the baby a different name, and mm-hmm. he's like, "How is Lolita doing? Oh, How Lolita. is like just all the different names?" And I'm uh-huh. like, "Oh my gosh, no." He's got two. Yeah. He's got two. Is he gonna uh-huh. go for more? You think? I don't know. Yeah, two was two. Two seems like a pretty good number. More yeah. than two seems like, uh oh. Here's the thing: when I see people announce like on Instagram that they're having a baby, I'm like, oh my god, that's so cool. And then they 
announce like a second baby, I'm like, no way. Once they get to three, I'm like, let's relax. Cut it out. What are we doing? That's what you comment let's on Instagram. Stop. Cut it out. Just stop. Enough. Enough is enough. Yeah. I have a friend who has five and I wow. think he's off his rocker. I'm like, dude, slow down. Get snipped. Cut it out. And he's like, nah, if we have another one, we have another one. That's kind of how they feel. I come from a huge family and I love that. I love that about my family. I have so many cousins, so many aunts and uncles. My grandma's a sibling of 25. She had. S stop, stop, stop. Yeah. 25? Yeah. <laughs> She's just. <laughs> Why? Way Me too many people. Mexican. Mexican. Yeah. Mexicano. <laughs> well, you got to do God's will. 25. I, my grandmother's one of 10. I thought that was a lot. 25? That's a lot. It what, is. What about you? You're so one then of how many? She had eight. My grandma had eight herself. Uh -huh. And then my mom was the youngest of the eight. And then my mom had four. Uh. And then now I just have one. And this is it. Yeah, I mean. I think it's nice to tear it I'm off I'm 41. Like I started very late. Hey, hey. Shmish. That's what's up. Yeah, I started real late. I was like, you know what? Let's wait until I'm considered geriatric and make it adventurous. You know yeah, they I mean? call geriatric pregnancy. I know. Because after you have the baby, the you have to have a walker for the rest of your life. Now. Yeah. You're, that's it. You're, You're gonna considered be high risk. Tennis balls rolling around. But yeah. the baby's good. Everything's healthy and everything's good. Yeah, we're good. I mean, Boom. she's like small, so I'm technically like high risk. But I'm like, I think she's small just because I'm small. Yeah, you're not a you're not a big person. Yeah, and they're just like, oh, no, she's pretty small. Like, you're, you're high risk. And I'm like, okay, so. Yeah, but you were probably tiny. What were you when you came out? Let me get, I, hold on, hold on. Okay, yes. Six pounds, five ounces. I was six pounds. I don't know how many ounces, but yes. Ooh, this is good, right? Yeah, what you're was pretty I? good. Give it a guess. Um, seven. Seven eleven. Ooh. Seven eleven. My sister was fat. She's going to listen to this and be pissed. She was eight something. <laughs> Big old porky baby, dude. She came out eating. She was still eating. She, yeah, they had... <laughs> <laughs> they had to put her back in to finish, and then they took her back out. <laughs> yeah, she was a big, she was a big girl. Um, I want to talk to you about so many things. Okay. Uh, first of all, congrats on three layers: baby, book special. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Checked out the special, lovely, wonderful. It also gave thank me nostalgia you. vibes because um, we just did Nashville. We were in Nashville like a month ago, not even. I don't know, a month, something like that. And the Ryman was, I mean, it's easily not only one of the most beautiful venues I've ever played. But it was. It's also uh, the sound and the acoustics are so loud and heavy and on top mm -hmm. of you. You really feel like they're all in it together. Some places are spread out. Yeah, and it just doesn't transfer sometimes. Yeah, not there, man. That was amazing. Yeah, the history of the venue as right? well. To think like Johnny Cash and Elvis and Dolly Parton, and then they let us riff raff in there, come in and tell some jokes. I like, know. I know. It's wild. It's a little, it's, I did feel a little disrespectful. I'm like, why am I in Johnny Cash's dress? Isn't, yeah. isn't, there, isn't there a scumbag room for us in the isn't basement? This rude? Yeah, yeah. It's Legends and then <laughs> me and Bobby Lee. <laughs> Bobby's naked upstairs playing the piano. But uh, it was incredible. Also, I don't know if I should say it, but at the end, you, you show the audience a little gift, uh, which I love to watch because I'm a big fan of your little friend that you brought out. My dog. Yeah, I don't know if you want to say yeah, that. Yeah, no. yeah, no. I, I bring him out after all my shows. Big fan of that. He he knows his part. It's yeah. part of the show. He knows it. He did put on a show. He had his paws kind of lined up like pictures now if you'd like them. He knows the end of my set because I take him with me on the road. He has. He knows your closer. Yeah, he wow. does. We have it on video because Danielle, my road manager, she'll come yeah. with me and she'll video. He'll be asleep either in his little bag or like on the couch in the green room. And as soon as I start my closer, he pops his little head up and like he's waiting for his turn to go running out on stage and come wow. get his applause. Does he give you joke notes? Does he tag stuff and punch stuff up for you? <laughs> I wish. I wish he made himself useful. Yeah, but... do something more, <laughs> buddy. You want more treats? Yeah. Give me a tag for this. Yeah. This joke isn't working. That's got to be fun to travel with the dog. I know a lot of people do that. I would love to travel with my dog, but... Uh, <laughs> My wife wouldn't like it. She's she wants the dog at the house. So you know, selfishly, she gets she gets to be comfortable at home and the dog. I have to be in. in I mean, know. it makes sense. You're leaving, like you leave her with somebody. I guess no, there is. There's a whole. For some reason, every time I leave town, there's always someone working on the house, and they, I guess they sleep over a lot of times. <laughs> the guy that did the roof. That's what my ring camera says. I don't know. They don't yeah, like to leave. He stayed late <laughs> for some reason. The roof. She's like the roof is still leaking. Oh, uh, it's not even raining, but it's leaking. I was like that's interesting, but okay. Um, but you wrote. Did you write a book before you put out the special? I mean, like when yeah. was this going on? You wrote the book, put it out, then push out the special. Yeah, so um, I wrote it during quarantine when we were all home. Oh, nice. It, Smart. But I started, 
a document on my computer like 10 years ago if I ever wrote a book. Because, okay, you know, in stand-up, we got to cut the fat. You get to the punchline, just Mm -hmm. say what you need to say. But there were some stories that I had that all the details were super juicy and important. And I tried them on stage and they just wouldn't work. And I was like, I know this is a good story. It's just not right for stand-up. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to save this for a book one day. And so I started this document on my computer, and I was like, if I ever write a book, this is going to be in one of the chapters. And so I just started adding all my stories there. And so that's kind of how it started. And then 2020, I was like, well, I guess it's time. Time to put it out. Time to get pregnant, have a book, have a special all at the same time. I think after this, you should take a big break. I probably should. Go away for a while, chill out, do your thing. Where's your, where's your, where is a getaway that you've never been that you've always wanted to go? Like a baby, what do they call it, a baby moon? Isn't that what it is? Yeah, we didn't do a baby moon. We were going to. Are you allowed to do that after you have a kid? I don't know if it's the same thing. Just hand the I kid to your parents going and go, to be, w- going on vacation. vacation. Yeah. 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 But we didn't do a baby moon because I was on the road and I yeah. was like, my husband loves to travel and I'm like, I travel for a living. I don't yeah. want to. It's hard to go on vacation. It's hard for me to go on vacation because I'm like, I just want to be home. I'm never home. That's funny. Not me. I'm the opposite. Oh, really? Well, we travel so much as stand ups, but when I'm. <laughs> Vacation Santino is a different guy. I am <laughs> I am the most chill I've ever been. I go with the flow. I don't care that thing. Like at home, I'm so anxious and I'm trying to line everything mm. up and da 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 and, and scheduling and this and that and canceling this and just and when I'm on vacation, dude, it's it's I'm a ghost. Good I for don't you. exist. Yeah. It's the one thing I think I've learned to be good at. Mm. And we're taking a big, big one this year, but um it's you gotta you gotta do where it a little going? bit more. I can't tell you. I don't want to sell, mm. tell the fans. Okay, yeah. I don't want to tell them where I'm going to go. You. Well, you know, because <laughs> then they know a little more about where you're going. And this is just for me, okay? <laughs> just you're leave not invited. me alone. You're not invited, but I will tag it when I get there. Yeah, yeah, I will, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. You know what's so funny? I never post on social when I go to a place until I'm way gone. Uh, if I do, it's like I've, it was like a week and a half after I've already been there. Oh, I usually do it like when I'm in the car driving away. Mm-mm. That's when I tag. No, because then they can still get you. <laughs> and they know where you are. <laughs> well, now that you're going to be the baby, are you going to do this thing? It's always interesting. You know, people cover up their baby's faces yeah. on Instagram. Is this going to be you too? I Putting don't think a rose so. on the face or whatever? I don't think I'm going to do that. I feel like I share so much of my life on social media. I can't imagine my child doing something adorable and me not sharing it yeah you know what i mean yeah. i can't i can't i mean well you're probably gonna have a good looking kid i hope so because uh your husband's very handsome he's very i you hope didn't, my kid looks you like didn't him. get any of the looks unfortunately now, i am the personality of our relationship yeah that's true yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're the uggo <laughs> so it's probably gonna be a good looking kid well let me tell you it's not guaranteed like I know two pretty people can, can have uglies. uglies. That's right. Can we name some? Go ahead. Yeah. Let's start. Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> we open up all celebrities. I'll tell you who's got an ugly kid. <laughs> no, but also one of my good friends when I was a kid, his parents were very, very unattractive. I'm not going to say who because he probably listens to the show sometimes. But uh, his parents were very kind of homely looking people. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He was the most handsome dude. He still is a very handsome adult male. Yeah. So he kind of tricked the universe a little bit. I'm a little. That's why I'm a little concerned. Yeah, you, you know should what I mean? Be. And then... Sometimes if you have a cute baby, not guaranteed to follow all the way through as an adult. Uh, I've seen this. Starts yeah. out good, yeah. spoils later. By the time they get like 17, like their skin's falling off, they're balding. Like Hunchbacked. Is it, is it yeah. gluten we should cut? What right. is it? You know right. what I mean? Like it's not Do you, guaranteed. Are you doing any crazy diet stuff? Are you doing wild, weird diet stuff? Mm-mm. What's the craving? You got a craving like hot dogs with, you know. Mm, no, it's just been dairy. Like no dairy or all dairy. No, all like I huh. want all the dairy. Like just oh, nice. give me like whole milk, vitamin D, ice cold cow in a cup. Like that's all I Ooh, want. Oh, nice. Yeah, cereal, but also this cereal is really just a vehicle to get the cold milk into my body. Sure. I think it's just milk. Just drink milk. I had a friend in college who would drink, who would like drink a gallon of milk in his in the dorm. My dad does that. He's in his seventies. I'm not joking. This is the most disgusting thing I think ever. He likes to go on road trips. He does his Harley trips. He rides a Harley Davidson, but also he'll just drive his car to, you know, Mexico, Phoenix, and go hang out with family and friends. His ice chest for his road trip has milk in it, a gallon of milk, <laughs> because he drinks milk. No water, no other, his road no trips. hydrating liquids. No, a gallon of milk to drink his milk on his road trips. Well, I got to tell you. 70 and he sounds like he's still doing good, so maybe milk is the answer. Maybe it is, but that's disgusting. Is it whole milk? Probably. Wow, Papa. 
It's gross. Papa, that's gross. Like you don't even because yeah. after a while your mouth is gonna taste gross. Like after I have cereal, I have to brush my teeth again because I'm not gonna have the milk taste stay you don't there. Want milk mouth now. No, and you're going from the Bay Area to Phoenix on milk. Disgusting. Yeah, that's pretty gross. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty gross. They're still up in the Bay, huh? Yeah, my that's dad. Home. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. home for you. Mm-hmm. That's not. I mean, I love it up there. Uh, you Where are you from? Oh, uh, Chicago. Oh, okay. You uh-huh. start. Did you start in the Bay? When you started no. stand up, where'd you start? LA. You started down here. Mm-hmm. This is me. I started out here too. Yeah. But you started your your life in the Bay. Then you moved down here and started stand up. Mm-hmm. And then now, do you think you're going to stick in LA or are you going to go back up north? Uh, we partly live in Nashville. God bless. Yeah. God bless, We're half, half Nashville, half here. And, and we know um, why it's tax purposes. You can just say it. Listen, it's taxes. And also my husband's in the music industry. Sure. So that helps. He has music writing sessions all the time. We've been going to Nashville for years and years and we've had property there that we would rent out because we were always there. We would tour out of Nashville right. when he was touring as a musician, but he's not anymore. Um, so we've had community there for a long time and we're like, you know what? These taxes are getting ridiculous. Maybe yeah. we should just. It's disgusting. Well, where, where is the, where's the, uh, where's the little Mugato going to get raised then? Well, we're going to start here cause my family's here Yeah. and then we'll be here for a few months and then we'll finish the year in Nashville. I dig it. Mm-hmm. Good for you, man. Thank it's you. not by coastal. I don't know what to call it. I know. I, One I just coastal? say by coastal, but it's not. It is it's, kind of. It's by, I don't know what it is. We yeah. should come up with a name, though. Yeah, we'll start a new name. It's like uh, M- mid coast landlocked by by coast landlocked coast mid coast mid, mid. by coast mid by coast Ooh, mid. Ooh, I like that by coast mid. That does sound like a medicine commercial. By coast mid. Yeah. <laughs> Are you having pains in the back of your neck all the way down to your anus? By coast mid. By coast mid side effects are way worse, obviously. No, but I do dig Nashville. I'm not gonna lie. I like Nashville. What a, a funky, cool place of like. Different culture, different different kinds of stuff that I kind of wasn't ever used to. Yeah. Chicago to here. Oh, well, I w- lived in Arizona. I went to Arizona State. So Chicago, Arizona here. I didn't really get that vibe down there until I started to go. And then I was like, oh, I dig. I actually like it. When did you go to Arizona State? How Are we the same age? Pretty close, yeah. I'm 41. Yeah, I'm fo- I'll be 40 this year. I graduated at okay. 06, 05, 06. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why, were my, you out there? You weren't out there. No, my cousin went to Arizona State. What was his or her name? Uh, her name is Michelle, and she's also redhead. Wait a minute. You don't know Say her, her last she's name older. on the count of three. One, two, three. Connelly. Connor. Oh, my God, Connolly? Yeah. Michelle Connolly. <laughs> I hooked up with Michelle Connolly when I was at so it. Yes, I did. Michelle Connolly, <laughs> I miss you. you. She gave me my first scare, actually. <laughs> had to go to the clinic. Michelle, bad girl. Michelle was a bad girl, dude. Did you go to school? Did you go to college? No, I did junior college for a little while. JC. Yeah. And then you started pom pom swinging, huh? Yep, I did. I went. I was a cheerleader. Well, I grew up cheerleading since I was a kid. Yeah. Did Pop Warner, high school, and college all stars. But all stars means you don't have to go to college. It's just an organization outside that your mm-hmm. college age. Because you're too good. <laughs> you were too good. You skipped. Yeah. You skipped through. I skipped, um, and then I did professionally for the Oakland Raiders, went to the Super Bowl, came home from the Super Bowl, packed up my bags, moved to L.A., and I said, I'm going to play a rape victim on Law & Order SVU. Dun, dun. And then I realized they film in New York, and I became a comedian. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. I had no idea. That, that sounds like Forrest Gump almost, where he's like, I had no idea where they filmed SVU. <laughs> So I started comedy. It's almost like <laughs> that life was gone. So you were like, well, I might as well. This is the life that I want to live. <laughs> that is very funny. I had my eyes on set on out here. And I loved California because it was dream, dream place to me. Like I only knew Florida. When you grow up in the Midwest, you don't really go West. We knew one kid, Brent, that his family moved to like, oh, I think it. Santa Barbara. And I was like, what's it like out there? Mm-hmm. What kind of fantasies happen? And then you learn nothing, really. It's just a lot of traffic and trash. But it is still a beautiful place. We're slowly getting away from staying here full time because you kind of don't need to be as much. Where are you going to be? I don't know. You know, all, there's little dots all over the country. I do want lake life. I've said that multiple Ooh, times. Okay. I do like lake life a lot. Kind of escape at a lake. Also, nothing in the lake is going to hurt you. I mean, so then you'd be good at Austin and Nashville where the True. new comedy hubs are Well, growing. Austin's. I don't know if Austin is for me. I think okay. Austin's not for, it's too, um, 
Uh, it's t- it's taking a lot of notes on L.A. Like it's, mm, I think it's like the you. Cliff's Notes of L.A. <laughs> you know, they like put a Soho house in and they, they all these like funky, cool, high-end stores. And I liked Austin when it was like ca- weird. When it Keep was, Austin weird. When it was actually kind of a yeah. weirdo place to be. Yeah. Uh, I took my my best friend there for his bachelor party when you know forever ago, and back you know that was back when like all those barbecue joints were in in yeah. uh, trailer hitches and in parking lots. Uh huh. Well, I hate to break it to you, but there's also a Soho House in Nashville now. So of course, there. Yeah, I think you're going to Florida. I think that's where you're gonna be. Can I? Yeah, I'll tell you where. You know where I'm gonna go? Where? I'm gonna go to North Dakota. Nobody's there. You're gonna start your own thing. Yeah, I'm start my own comedy yeah. club in North Dakota. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like that for you. Comedy on high. That's what it's called. Comedy on high. Okay. Um, it's a 16 seat room. So yeah. a lot of open micers. Should be easy Love to that. fill. No, <laughs> honestly, no micers. It's just me every night. You're going to get me every night, North Dakota. Yeah. Strap in and get used to it. Is this your first special on YouTube, by the way? Yes. Yeah. Because you've done everything else uh, with bigger platforms yeah. with like the, the corporate guys. What yeah. was the, what was the impetus to be like, oh, that's it. I'm going to put it on YouTube instead of going to the so traditional I, routes. I started on YouTube. I had a video go viral. It was one of the first oh, comedy we know. videos to go viral. Oh, that nail salon video yeah. on this brand new thing called YouTube back in 2007. Yeah. And it catapulted my career. From there, I this was January 2007. This video starts going viral. And viral wasn't even like a good term yet. Yeah, we didn't know what it was. No. A lot of people saw it. That's how they said it. A lot of people saw it. A lot of clicks. Got a lot, a lot of, of clicks. clicks. Um, and it's at the same time where, like, if you got an email from your friend and there was a video in it, you definitely watched it Mm -hmm. because it was a new thing. It's like, oh, what? I can watch a video in an email? Yeah, yeah. So that was January 2007. By, like, February, there was, like, 4 million views on this video. Um, I didn't have an agent or anything at the time. And at the time, I was on unemployment. I was, my checks had run out. I was an extra and... Like, I wasn't getting any extra work. Like, I was ready to go back home. And all of a sudden, this video starts taking off. I end up getting a new agent, a new manager. I end up booking Mad TV. Mm -hmm. And then I started, this is MySpace days. So then my MySpace page starts blowing up. And people start messaging me from all over the world. Like, when are you coming to Australia? When are you coming to the Philippines? And I was like, oh, I have like 12 minutes of jokes. Like, yeah. I was so brand new. I was like, ah, I guess I better write some more material. So I started writing more material. And then by the end of the year, I was touring, headlining with my 45 minutes that I had written over the summer. And I was on Mad TV at the time. So 2007 was a year that changed my life. From January, when this YouTube video just changed my life, to the end of the year where I'm touring, I'm on Mad TV, and my life has completely changed. And from that, I did a special on Comedy Central. I did one on Netflix. I have a couple on Amazon. And it just felt like this time around, it's my first time owning it. It's my first time producing it, self-financing it. Good. And I was like, I'm going to bring it back to YouTube where it all started for my career. Back and to the beginning. also because I wanted to honestly grow like globally. like. I want to be able to tour other parts of the world and, Mm. like, bring my family. Like, bring my child, my husband, and go to these different parts of the world and be able to do what I do here. And I feel like YouTube is the best platform to grow that For sure. Global. I mean, that's – you can touch every market, and they can – and it's automatically translated. They don't have to hunt for it in different settings and, you know – not to dog on it, you know, I did a put a special out on January on Netflix and it's great, but other countries have to like turn their settings to a different yeah. thing to even see it. And then, you know, then it will get into their algorithm. But right. yeah, YouTube just is the, I mean, you know, we're on it right now. And so it's kind of like, Whoa. it's kind of like, yeah, the access is way larger. And I see more and more people doing it, which I think is going to transform the way the game works now of, I don't know what the next platform is, but it's it's con it's coming. Whatever it is, yeah. there's something brewing around the corner. Some, some you know, group of kids in a basement somewhere are, mm-hmm. are they're working on something. Mm-hmm. The next the next jump, or you know, you put it on Trump's uh, Trump's new Truth Social. <laughs> <laughs> Angela Johnson, great comic. <laughs> Wouldn't be on my platform. It doesn't. I don't know why. <laughs> in here. We pour whiskey, whiskey. Hey, this episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by BetterHelp. I've talked very openly 
uh, about mental health help and mental health awareness, and that's why I believe in better help. Look, uh, we've all gone through different struggles in our life. I believe as you get older, you start to learn everyone's got something going on, and I do believe talking to someone is probably the best thing that you can do to get started on your path to happiness and mental health uh, help and awareness. Um, BetterHelp is trusted. It's been around for a long time, and uh, they work with you to find you the best person to speak to. We spend so much of our time giving. Uh, it can leave us feeling stretched out and super thin, whether you have a family or friends or a business that you're trying to balance. Um, you need to take time for yourself like I do, and I love it, and I use it from the comfort of my own home, which is probably the best part because it's cheaper than traditional in-person therapy. You don't got to go anywhere. Uh, and if you feel like you need to talk to someone, BetterHelp is a great place to start. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely done online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash whiskey today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, better dot com slash whiskey today. Nobody likes stressing over buying tickets to an event or a game. It's annoying. That's why there is game time, baby. Buying tickets to your favorite events, they shouldn't feel stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets, their best price guarantee, you're going to stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you're going to have. Game time said, give it a try, Santino. And so I did. Got myself some Doyers. Let's go Doyers. Got some Dodgers tickets with some Tajin. Uh, it was uh, super wonderful, super easy, super fun. You get images of the seat views. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Of course, baseball is my favorite. But forget planning months in advance. Game time deals on tickets uh, are right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, baseball, basketball, concerts, comedy, theater, much more. The game time guarantees that you will always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time's going to credit you 110% of the difference. Come on, baby. It's like you're making money. Uh, it's it's sent directly to your phone. These tickets are very easy to acquire. You're not going to have to dig through an email, and you buy, buy them in a matter of seconds. Two taps, and you're set. Snag those tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code WHISKEY for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code WHISKEY for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Ginger. I like gingers. This guy, offer, yeah, he's got his own new uh, anti Twitter <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> there's all these new ones are going to keep popping up, but I think there's got to be one that's going to emerge as the top dog because YouTube has been at the top for a long time. Mm -hmm. So something else is coming, I think. Well, I feel like, especially in the comedy world, stand-up comedy, Netflix has become synonymous. Is that the right word? That yeah, it's I'm synonymous for of? sure. Yeah, comedy special Netflix is what they think of now. Exactly. So many fans will come up to me and be like, hey, when's your next uh, Netflix special? And I'm like, it's not Netflix. It's you. even this morning. I was calling a bunch of radio stations this morning, you know, promoting, trying to get my my the word out there about my special. And it's like, yeah, we do a whole interview about how it's on YouTube, and I tell the whole story, mm -hmm. come back full circle, and then they end the interview with like, check out her new Netflix special. You can catch it. I'm like, oh my god, no, it's not. It's YouTube, but it's just a part of where we are right now. People are so used to seeing comedy specials on Netflix before that was Comedy Central. It yeah. was everybody used to go to Comedy Central for specials. So I feel like it's going to be YouTube soon. People are going to know Yeah, where's YouTube. your YouTube special? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Netflix is Q-Tip. It's, it's, you know, Q-Tip is a Q-Tip's a Q-Tip, but that's the brand. That's not the name of the thing, you know? So it's mm, kind of like, mm -hmm. those are, ear, I don't even know what they call them, like ear cotton swabs. But Q-Tip is now what we all call it. That but, is such a really good analogy. Q-Tip is Q-Tip. And Q-Tip is also a great rapper. Shout out Q-Tip. <laughs> uh, but it is funny that that's become the new thing. But you're right, though. Even still, um, people will say, people, fans will come up to you and go, and they've watched, you, they just uh -huh. watched your new special and they'll go, I loved your Netflix special so much. And you're yeah. like, oh, thank you. And and then you'll be reminded in the middle of the conversation, you're like, they're talking about the YouTube special. But at some point. Yeah, it's, it's As long whatever. as they're fans. Yeah. Have you ever had, have you ever had a, um, have you ever had a fan who's, uh, on a plane with you and is a little too fanny or do you avoid it? Um, do you not talk to people on the plane? Are you a uh, mask on cover up hat down? I'll do, I talk little bits. 
you know? What's and your best lie? If somebody says, what do you do? Do you lie or do you tell them the truth? So that's the thing. I, if I don't want questions, I won't say comedian. Because the second my face says that I'm a stand-up comedian, all the questions. Yeah. Really? Where? where? Questions, questions, questions. Well, yeah. But if I just say, oh, I'm an actress. Oh, have I seen you in anything? Give them a couple credits that they've probably never seen. Right. Or an episode of, yeah, I was on an episode of uh, Curb Enthusiasm a long time ago. Oh, I know that oh, show. That's right. Yeah, yeah. With, the, with the Jewish yeah. guy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's an easy way to get out. Done. But the same. second I say comedian, then it's like, uh, they want to hear a joke. Uh, they think I'm an open micer mm -hmm. immediately. They're like, you know, it's that whole thing. I say mechanical engineer. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> But the chances of me running into another one is pretty <coughs> slim. But I would like to be caught in that lie, you know? Ooh, I say mechanical one. engineer. I say, what have you worked on? I said, honestly, uh, the ISS, the International Space Station, we worked yeah. on that for like a long time. And uh, I was the guy that did all the rigging for, um, you know, f honestly, for all the human waste. So I rigged where, the, where they hold all the human waste up there. And after that, I think they don't want to know anything else. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I said, well, they have to go to the bathroom. I would feel too dumb to converse. Yeah. I'd be like, wow, wow, good for you. Yeah. And I'd go, look, somewhere they gotta they're going to the bathroom up there. Yeah. I'm the guy that rigs the mechanism to keep it in the tub there. Yeah. And I'll go, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> Do you want to hear more about it? And they don't want to hear anything about it. Nobody wants to hear about poop in space. My new book. Pick up my new book, Poop in Space, by the way. <laughs> I yeah, I always make up some some stupid lie just because I don't I don't really feel like doing it. Uh -huh. And it's usually like it'll be like a 70-year-old man. Yeah, yeah. Who's like, what do you do, young man? I met a girl sitting next to me on the plane the other day who is actually a um a puppet puppeteer for Sesame Street. That's interesting. See, right? that's fun. That's a fun gig. Yeah, that was a good conversation. I enjoyed that. I was like, oh, okay. Who does she, which one? Who does she puppet? Uh, you know what? I forget which one she does, but N not we, a we started following one. each other on Instagram. And um, like, she's full on on the show. And that was like a dream of hers. And she's Aww. real good at like the, like, ventriloquism. What is it? Like, what? ventriloquism, yeah. But yeah. she doesn't need to be, right? Because they're hidden. Right, but she does both. So she's oh. been on like talk shows where oh. she's full on singing. She has a beautiful singing voice and she'll like sing, but it's the doll singing. Oh, wow. Yeah, you meet you, some interesting people when uh, you uh, actually engage. Some of them. Yeah. Some of them, dude. <laughs> Not all the time. Yeah, but that's like we met a guy. Uh, I met a guy who was a great photographer and he did a great bit where my, the guy who was uh, featuring for me, my good friend Chris, somehow, some way, he was downgraded and this other guy was upgraded. And so I loved every second of it. So we were taking pictures with this stranger and I was sending it to Chris being like, hey, I'm so happy this guy's in your seat and not you. And he was livid because they moved him to like the, the by the bathroom in the back of the plane. Oh, worst. And then worst. so we became friends with this guy and he's great. And he's a phenomenal photographer. And those kind of things that happen, they're great. But a lot of times it's the other way where, yeah. you know, you get trapped in a weird world of like, you know, at first it starts simple. You're a comic. This is great. I love comedy. Blah, blah, blah. And then by the end of it, you know. They start getting political or something, and you're like, I don't really want to spend another We're hour and a friends. half in the sky yeah. <laughs> talking about this. Why are we doing We're Like, why? I don't need to get into this thing with you where they're just like, and I'm saying the border should be closed. And you're like, oh my God, we have so much longer of a flight to go down. And you're like, keep your voice down. People think that I'm like traveling. We both with you. think the border should be closed. Yeah. You're like, no, 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 okay, I, just, I don't care enough to even get into this. What's your, okay, so what's your, I, I talked about this with another friend recently. Out of all the touring that you do, because I feel like mm -hmm. you are nonstop. I feel like you go a lot. Like you're moving a lot. What's when you do get a break? What's your little uh, comic secret life? I feel like every comic has a secret life. What's your normal, maybe monotonous or boring thing to other people? What do you do to like get away from the machine? Family. Just kicking it with with the fam. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, like I described how big my family is earlier. Too many. Um, a lot of us. And so I just like to hang out with my family, nieces and nephews. No weird cousins. hobbies? Nothing interesting that you do that's like... No, You got I no don't. fun, like secret to, Angela Johnson stuff? I wait, I'm not that talented. Like, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> that's not... I don't have, like, a secret thing. I go play piano when I get home. No. no. I just hang out with my family and friends. I love to do game night. I love to host. I love to have people over. Um, you I like to, to host eat parties. food. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a good cook? No, but I am getting better. Since COVID, when mm -hmm. I was home and I was, I was like, well, I guess I might as well start cooking. 
since then I have enjoyed it. And now that it's so like popular to follow foodies on Instagram and yeah, watch all too. the recipes being made, I'm like, oh, I could do that one. And so I'll try like the easy ones. But do you follow, uh, what is it? Salt Hank, Hank Salt or something? It's this guy, he makes- Salt Hank? Yeah, no, he I have makes to look like, at this human oh, being. you have to. Salt Hank. I okay. think that's his name. He makes sandwiches, but they're like the most ridiculous, like chimichurri, steak, everything's homemade sandwiches. And they're so intricate. Oh, I, I see would, this guy. I would never, ever attempt to make one of his sandwiches, but I do want one. Yeah. I, I, you know, these guys make me mad because I can't do much when it comes to cooking. Uh-huh. But like this guy, like it, this looks fun. You know what I mean? It looks like he, but, but the, my problem with cooking is I got to clean it up. Yeah. So it's exhausting. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't really want to do it. I mean, it's a privileged life to live to say uh-huh. like, I don't cook that often, mm-hmm. but she doesn't either. We don't, we just don't, we don't love it. We'll try some stuff together and it's miserable. <laughs> and then we're like, let's just go get food. Yeah. This is a waste of our time. Yeah, let's I work. burnt the thing. You overcooked that thing. Uh-huh. Now I have to like scrub the sealant uh-huh. off of a pan for an hour and a half. No, thanks. I'll just get a, make a pro do it. Yeah. I let the pros do it. Let them do what they do. Yeah, Let I get, us do what that's we how I do. feel. Well, because that's my like one vice is on the road. I like going to eat big boy meals. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially when me and Bob are touring because, you know, he's round. He enjoys food. <laughs> he's round, dude. <laughs> I think you're catching up to him with that thing. You might be yeah, almost the same we can, belly. We can battle it out. You battle the bellies. He loves to eat food and he always says, he goes, uh, you know, he'll eat, order everything off the menu. And he says, and I, and I, this is actually valid. He goes, I'm an addict and I don't use anymore. So this is my vice. Let uh-huh. me have this vice. Uh-huh. So then I kind of like, yeah, you know what? Order seven appetizers. And he does. He'll order everything off the do appetizer. Do what you do. Well, yeah. If you get, Everyone has like one little stupid vice that they like. I don't care. I love this so much. It's the one thing that it's not hurting anybody. I need it. I want it. I I feel- uh, You got a I've little vice? a What's lot your of, vice? Um, well, alcoholics go to candy uh, once yeah. they get- Sugar, because they want the, the sugar. sugar. Yeah, the and sugar. And so- my cousin, he's sober like 30 something years now and he sponsors people. And so that's one of his things is he'll be like, keep candy by your bed, like keep candy around you, you know, for yeah, if you, in case you want to hit and yeah. whatnot. Um, a vice, I mean, I, I, I like to eat bad food. Like, oh, you eat, oh, you, you're a bad girl. You like to eat like really, really unhealthy stuff. Flaming hot Cheetos. Oh man, come on! Is, it's delicious. It's delicious, delicious, but there's so many chemicals in them. But I don't care. I Who love cares? flaming hot Cheetos. We live here. We're breathing this air. That's what I'm saying. Like can't flame, be can't be any worse than that. Like MSG, all the things with MSG. Mm-hmm. I like those. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Extra bad. Yeah. Make the heart work for it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's in there just beating along. Yeah. Boring, just pumping blood. Make uh-huh. it start. Give it a couple scares. Yeah. <laughs> Let it know that I've got, I can, I could cut you off too, Hart, at any second. Yeah. I like the Flamin' Hot. I think I just saw a preview that they're making a movie about the guy who invented the Flamin' Hot Cheeto. I saw it. It's incredible. You saw the film already? Oh my God. It's so good. Is it already out or you just had access to it? I just had access. I'm a VIP. Um, Fancy. Yeah. I'm in the Latino VIP crew. How come um, I'm not in the Latino VIP crew? I don't know. You know, I meet a lot of stupid people that occasionally will go, Santino, are you Latino? And I'm like, oh, what? What? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know what? Yeah, I am. I am. Well, you could be in Mexico City. Yeah, I could. There is some redheaded Mexicans. My cousin, Michelle, that you hooked up with in Arizona. Mm-hmm. Remember? I mm-hmm. remember. My girl. <laughs> She's a redheaded Mexican. She's a redheaded Mexican. So is Louis C.K. He's uh, Mexican? Yeah, man. I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 He's he's Mexican. His dad is Mexican, I think. Mexican, Jewish. One more thing. I, one more thing, but yeah, no, there is a couple of you're Italian Irish, Italian and Irish, yeah, yeah Italiano, Siciliano, uh-huh. which is like the bad boys of Italy. The Sicilians, uh-huh. we're the uh-huh. tough kids. Where's your family you're the from? Thin pizza, yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah, well, some of my family members aren't thin pizza, some of my family members are deep dish. <laughs> Someone would have to wear compression leg sleeves on the planes. Um, where's your family from? We're Mexican, yeah, but where in Mexico? It's such a Michoacan. Michoacan. I've been to Michoacan. Really? Yeah, I had to get some pills one time and I went you down so there. <laughs> <laughs> My grandma, when she was alive, she used to say, don't tell anybody you're from Michoacan because it was like ghetto, gangster, whatever. Tough. So she was like, don't tell people you're from Michoacan. But I'm fourth generation. So like my parents don't even speak Spanish. We're, Your parents we're don't speak Mar- Spanish. Mm-mm. Do you speak Spanish at all? N- a very little bit. Man, you should. You're here. I know. Rude. And you can take it to Nashville. They all <laughs> speak Spanish over there. I should do it. I should do it. 
I haven't. Nashville, there's uh, there's not a maybe there was some Spanish being spoken over there. Now that there, I think about there's it. like one street. There's one Nol- <laughs> Nolansville Pike that if you go down, they have this place called Plaza Mariachi. <laughs> Is this real? And it's real. Love and the you go in there and it's like they have live music. They have um, Loteria, which is like Mexican mm-hmm, bingo. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have a bunch of little restaurants. And it's almost like you're going through Mexico because they have little markets where you can get like all all the trinkets, trinkets and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. I like that. What, what's it called again? Plaza Mariachi. But what's a street called? Oh, Nolensville Pike. Nolensville Pike. That uh-huh. couldn't be the more whiter name yeah. for a... Plaza, Plaza Mariachi. Mariachi on Nolansville Pike. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's how they have to say it. I love when they throw in the the uh, the heavy, heavy uh, English world. Nolansville Pike. Bob yeah. Bob and Karen Nolansville, <laughs> who created Nolansville Pike. Plaza Mariachi. Uh, there's a place, by the way, here in LA, I've talked about it. You reminded me when you said Plaza. There's a place called Plaza that's a drag bar. And uh, if you're ever in for a real party, when that baby comes out and you want to go back out yeah. and your husband, take him to Plaza. It's it's real sketchy. It's real dirty. It's really shady, but it's a great drag bar, and they sing karaoke. Love. And it's uh, all in Spanish. There's no Ooh. English being spoken in there at all. So you can a test Spanish drag bar. Yeah, probably the best in the city. And I don't know why. Wow. I don't know why I'm plugging them as if I'm sponsored by them. <laughs> uh, and I come out, and my I am the flaming hot Cheeto. When I, I come love out. that. I um, love that for no, you. No, but it's a great drag bar that I got taken to a long time ago, and it's maybe one of the most fun nights I've had in years because nobody speaks English. You've got to make your way around, whether you know broken broken Spanish, and everything is negotiable. I oh, I like all that. the drinks are negotiable. No way. So they all slide you a drink, and they'll tell you a price, and then you negotiate until you get it to where no you think. You, way. Yeah. Well, it's all watered down too. None yeah, yeah, yeah. You you see the bottles, you're like it's like resort cocktails. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, honestly. The all-inclusive ones. That's what they do. Where you drink it, you're like, what's in this? Yeah. And they're like, there's rum. There's rum in there. And you're like, no, 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 I don't think so. <laughs> have you ever done a cruise? I have. No, Performed? I haven't worked on one. Okay, right, 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 right. Actually, take that back. Uh, Oprah did a cruise. It's called uh, Oprah and Gail's Girls Getaway Cruise. Come on. And they hired me to come and perform on that cruise. That's the only cruise that I've ever performed big on. Can you imagine her setting foot on a cruise? Oprah, you liar. You've never been on a cruise yet. No, she was there. She came to my show and everything. Cut it out. Oprah yes. was on the cruise. Yes, she came to my show. Did she helicopter in and helicopter out? Maybe. Yeah, there's that no chance she was it. sleeping on that cruise. <laughs> Unless they gave her one entire floor. <laughs> the, the big O, I'm blown away that she went on a cruise. Every time I, I see those things, they gave me terrible anxiety. We were in Australia. I was there for two and a half months at the beginning of the year. And when we went to Sydney, we stayed at a beautiful location, but the cruise liners go in there, mm. and which was a little interesting because the hotel was very expensive. Mm. And I was like, we're spoiling ourselves. It's a nice hotel. And then in the mornings, these cruise ships are coming. And were I was you like, working? Or- I was shooting a movie, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But this was vacation afterwards. I went to okay. Sydney with my parents and took the, flew them on and wanted them to How come fun. see. Yeah, it was amazing. But the cruise ships every day that would come in, and they would funnel them off and then suck them back on. Almost like the changing tides. Yeah. It's like they, bleh, they like it vomits humans and then it yeah. bleh, sucks them all back yeah, on and yeah, they get yeah. off. But I was watching them load one day at lunch on the balcony. I was writing and drinking coffee. And I watched them load the bowels of it with all of the liquor and food. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's like, I think that's one of the things where you're like, we are gluttonous. Disgusting. We are just bad people. Yeah. yeah. Like the world is starving and we're lugging on just two trucks of ju- <laughs> trucks of French fries and all that. Good for cruise people if you like it. I just, I can't do it. I can't be out at sea like that. I did the Oprah cruise and my husband, he used to be in the Christian music industry. And God bless. He got, <laughs> God bless. He, he got booked for a Christian cruise. And so I went with him. What is a Christian cruise like? It's so they have like a bunch of Christian music artists performing uh-huh. and then a bunch of people from the Midwest in like their matching like Christian t shirts where it looks like it's the Pepsi logo, but it says Jesus and mm-hmm. you know, like things like that. Mm-hmm. And um <laughs> A lot of Jesus take the wheel. A lot of that. Take the of wheel th- of this cruise ship. Let me tell you. So we were on this <laughs> cruise ship and you know, in like the foyer, it's very like gaudy gold like so you've never been on a cruise ship so no you, okay you're not gonna catch me dead on one okay so everything's like fancy and like sterile it's spiral and whatever and so they had these 
um, like Egyptian gold cat statues all around. Uh But the cat statues also had boobs, you know? Because you know how like, you know, though it'll be like half animal, half human, oh, right? Oh, right. So there's these cats lay- that are like posed L- like laying a lynx, there, a but they have boobs, oh. right? But on the Christian cruise, they covered up the cat boobs with like a bra. <laughs> really, <laughs> it's just so funny. It's <laughs> even more somehow that's more sensual. It's, <laughs> it's like a gold tube top that they put over the cat boobs. But see, that's more sent. People they don't know that that's actually more enticing. Like as a kid, I remember as a young lad. When I started to find out about myself, a Victoria's Secret was hotter than a nude magazine because the 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 naughtiness of like mm. what's underneath. Mm, Somehow mm-hmm. that was hotter because when you saw a nude magazine, that's interesting. Well, then you see it, and it's yeah. still the same kind. It's still hot when you're young. You're like, oh my god. Yeah. But for some reason, Victoria's Secret was so sexy because it's the mystery of what's underneath. It's um. We used to find my dad's nudie magazines in the back shed. And this is like, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> the nude magazines in the shed, you know, his boys would come over. He's like, go to the shed. Yeah. <laughs> you want You want to, you want to break today? Go to the shed. <laughs> yeah. We would find all his nudie magazines. This is the eighties and nineties. Mm-hmm. And so they would all be like hidden in the back shed. That's yeah. where he kept all, all his, his gems. <laughs> yeah. And then my brother, he's gay. When he was younger, before he would come out of the closet, we were starting to like catch on. You knew. And he would um, save the packaging of his new underwears because they would have the guys in the underwear. Oh, on that's it. so funny. So he would save the packaging. That in was his, his nudie magazine. Yeah. How, what do you mean he? That lo- was his Victoria's Secret. Yeah, right. He <laughs> was leaving, uh, that was Victor's Secret. Yeah. He was leaving little <laughs> hints as he went about that you knew when he yeah, was young. Yeah, yeah. Where there was just glitter trails behind him when he would walk through the house. You're it, like, where's all this glitter coming from? Well, he started his. Eyebrows were real thin. He was oh. plucking his eyebrows. Mm-hmm. And he just had a, a little sass. He's handsome. I can see it in my mind. I don't know yeah. your brother, but I bet you he's handsome. Oh, yeah. Now he's got tattoos like all over. On his he's face? Very, yeah, he has tattoos on his face, on wow. his neck, on his arms. He does hair, but he's very much like that. Um, he's like the artsy guy. He's got, like the murals over his arms and right stuff on. like that. So if you see him walking down the street, you'd be like, oh, who's this tough guy? He's probably going to stab me. But then like when he turns around, you could see like all his Botox and like right. he has the, the good lips. And he, he looks, he's a prettier version of me. Like when you see like his face, like he's got the stru- the cheekbones. Pretty boy. He's got the lips, his lashes. He's very, he's, he's pretty. And the people are like, he's going to stab me, this guy. Well, he wants to stab me. Yeah, but... But not with a knife. Uh, yeah, I'm in love. Yeah. yeah. He's in, yeah he, wa- <laughs> he wants to shank me with something else. Yeah. <laughs> in here, we pour whiskey, whiskey. Well, hello, fresh Boy, oh boy, do I love HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, if you don't know, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Skip those trips to the grocery store. Count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy and fun and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. I've been using HelloFresh for many years prior to them sponsoring me. And uh, it's been wonderful. This May, by the way, May Bay Bay, HelloFresh is celebrating Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Shout out to my boy Bobby Lee. Try limited time authentic recipes created in partnership with Chef Sir B. Sani of New York City's Tagmo Restaurant and enjoy a cultural taste uh, tour right in your own kitchen. HelloFresh makes dinner time snapping easy, baby, with deliciously easy options that are going to please everyone at your table. They got fit and wholesome uh, to pescatarian to veggie. They got it all. All right. I love the heavy, hearty ones. That's my favorite. Uh, and it's so simple to do because it's delivered right to your doorstep and it's very fresh ingredients. I don't like to go to the grocery store, okay? I don't do it anymore. It stinks. I'm uncomfortable. I don't know what to buy. I end up just buying cereal and mochi. Uh, but this way you get uh, farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients delivered right to you. And it's so easy to put together that even a Dumbo like me can do it. So if you are looking to get this sent to your door, Hello Fresh is the place. Delicious food right on time. Makes cooking so easy and fast. Uh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Whiskey16. Use the code Whiskey16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Come on, man. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Whiskey16. Use the code Whiskey16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Summer's coming, boys. 
And uh, are you ready to unveil your beach bod? Manscaped is here to ensure your beach body is ready for all the oohs and ahs coming down your way for full body grooming and hygiene products that they've got in store. Don't be that dude at the beach with stinky pits and Austin Powers chest hair. Uh, and by the way, if you grew some uh, winter boobs, you got some winter boobies, the least you can do is make sure they're hairless, all right? So if your partner's sucking on them, make sure there's no hair on there. Uh, it's time to get ready for hot guy summer, babe, by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with that code whiskey. Manscaped is dedicated to helping you increase your confidence, level up your full body grooming game with a performance package 4.0. It comes with that essential lawnmower, waterproof cordless body trimmer, and a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your grooming routine. I've been using the lawnmower for so long now. It's unbelievable. They should give me my own. The Santine Sweeper is what they should call it. You can even trim uh, an arrow pointing to the promised land if you're bold enough to shave yourself. Tell people where it's at, baby. They got the Crop Preserver, Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver, Ball Toner, Anti-Chafing, Ball Deodorant. They got it all. Make it smell and look nice. Also, the nose nose hairs can get cleaned up with a Weed Whacker 2.0. And you're going to get two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag. $39 $39 value and the padded high performance reduced chafing manscape boxers which I'm wearing right now very comfortable on my boys have the right tools for grooming your tool is essential all right uh, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code whiskey at manscaped.com that's 20% off plus free shipping with the code whiskey at manscaped.com trim your chesticles with the besticles baby ginger I like gingers pretty a, a guy a pretty boy that does hair did he do hair when he was young did he have like dolls that he did hair on? And you were like, "Oh, um, this is this is his little dream." Yeah. Well, my mom is a hairstylist. Oh, my, wow. okay. My grandma, everybody did hair. My aunt. You uncles, didn't fall into it though. I don't know how to do anything to my hair, but this, I, I curled it with like a Dyson air wrap. That's all I know how to do. But with um, a vacuum? No, Dyson does um, hair products now. What? It's, it's, the Dyson vacuum company makes hair stuff. Yeah. Am I loony? Has this been around for a long time and I have no idea? Uh, I mean, it's fairly new, fairly, like, past couple years. But it's like a vacuum, but it's like a spiral thing, and you <laughs> hold your hair to it, and it goes, Zoop, I like can't that. help but think that that's how this started. Someone was using a vacuum was like, yeah. <laughs> And then they were like, I, I think we got to tell Dyson about this, man. They got something going here with this sucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> so are they really? It's got to be fancy then, because Dyson's are expensive, right? So it's got to yeah. be. These are like the nicest version it's of dumb expensive. Right, right, it's right, real right, right. Dumb. Where it's overpriced for no reason, but you're yep. like, it does work really well. Yep. Exactly. You guys have all the fun toys. That's why my whole bathroom. You know, when we redid our bathroom, and I got, I was like, we gutted out an old part of the house, uh, knocked down a wall to make the bathroom twice the size. Ooh. Yeah. And then I thought, we're gonna have room now. <laughs> no. I, we have a double huge vanity and it's not mine. I still use the guest bedroom. <laughs> it's the saddest thing on earth. I still go to the other room and it's pathetic. I come home from a long trip and I go into my bathroom instinctively to unload and I go, no, I don't, no, this is not for I me. I don't belong here. I know. So the next place we get, I did say that I want a master bathroom. I want yeah. my own because yeah. I have a nice, I have this little pot, powder bathroom. Like a, I got drawers. I got stuff to put in drawers. Yeah, and she's like, shut up. Get out of yeah. here, loser. <laughs> what do you got, your deodorant and your cologne? Get out of here. It is like, it's, it's like a, it's like a trimmer for my face. Yeah. Deodorant, cologne, m- some skin products that were always gifted to me that I yeah. don't keep up with. I yeah. use skin products for uh, uh, Christine Coe, who's a great actor, actor that's on our show on Dave. And she gave me a beautiful box of really high end stuff. Uh-huh. And I was like, okay, I, I really should start using this at this point in my life. Uh-huh. One week I get one week and then I forget about it. I don't do it. I can't. Is, is that how you're with vitamins too? Same vitamins. Yeah. Yeah, give me a week. I'll knock out a week. <laughs> I'm never going to keep going. I get into everything for like a week. I try it. And then I just go, I don't really feel like keeping up with that. Okay. But are you the guy who during that week you're gung ho and you're like telling everybody about it? Oh, you're not on Nutrisystem, bro. You got to do it. it. <laughs> got to get on Mega Max. <laughs> No, I'm not the guy. I don't tell anybody, but I do keep up really well. Like, I'll do it. If she's like, pill in the morning, pill at night, eh. this has all the essentials, and I'll go, you got it. And uh. then I'll do it. And then when once I scoot into Saturday and Sunday, <laughs> gone. <laughs> Throw them away, dude. <laughs> They're going to end up in another chunky Expired. cabinet. Yeah, that's just, I'm not good about, I've never been good with like, uh, and that's, and what the good news is, because I work in Hollywood, it's, it's going to hinder my future, because I'm going to look old, I'm going to look older than I've always looked. I'm 40 now almost, and I've looked 40 since I was 20, so I finally met this. Yeah. I'm at the <laughs> precipice of like, it, we're, it, it's here. We're here. <laughs> then it's going to go the other you way. You caught up to yourself. Yeah, I finally caught up to my face. <laughs> but like you, you've looked young your whole life. I remember when I first saw you on the internet, 
And I was like, who is this 12 year old doing stand up? Because you you looked so young, when, especially when that first video came. And you were, you were 20. Four. Three or four, right. Yeah. But I was like, who is a 16 year old girl illegally in a comedy club <laughs> doing stand up? Illegally in our country. Yeah, illegally that's what I meant. <laughs> that, that's what I meant. How'd she get in here? <laughs> Tell a joke at the border to get through? <laughs> From San Francisco. Or how north in the Bay? Are you Bay Bay? San Jose. I love San Jose. I'm not yeah. kidding. I really love San Jose. I discovered it on accident when I was going to do a gig. You discovered it? I did. <laughs> it's called, it was because, it, was, it used to be called Andrew Santino Jose. Andrew Santino Jose. Andrew Santino Jose. <laughs> but I discovered that I liked that place because I'd been there, I think, in a gig, uh, like gone through it. And then I went there for a gig and I spent like a little bit of time and I was like, this is actually co way cooler than I kind of ever thought. No one ever give it credit. It's kind of a pass through. I know? love San Jose. I really like Some it. Some people hate their hometown. Like, oh, I can't wait to get out of here. I love it. I it's a nice place, but no one, home. it doesn't get enough credit because it's, you know. Do you do the improv there? What I do there. No, no, no. I never performed there. I did. Oh. Uh, I was shooting something and I stayed okay. in San Jose. You're so good at shooting things. I shoot a lot of stuff. Good for you. They got me on TV and film. Good for you. You know, for now, I I'm orange enough and I fill a gap. Well, you better start using those creams your friend sent you so you can keep that film career going. This is a shot. She's taking a shot at me. <laughs> I hear it. And you know what? I like the wrinkles. How about that? I saw a woman on TV last night who was, uh, 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 we watched the Anna Nicole Smith documentary, uh -huh. which miserable, by the way. Don't, I do not recommend. It's, it's so heartbreaking. The Aww. whole time you're like, this is awful. I thought it was going to be fun, yeah. some of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> thought it'd be fun. Well, some of her life was fun and wild and cool. And then you're like, oh, this is all trauma-based. But there was a woman on there who had to have been late 70s, mid 70s, and had gotten so much work done. Oh, yeah. She was frozen in time. Yeah, I don't want to be that. I, I don't want to be that. do that. But I do want to be Martha Stewart. You mean, what do you, like what, go to jail later in life? No, being on the cover of sw Swimsuit, uh, whatever, Sports Illustrated. At 80. That wasn't her. It's a body double. She's getting found out. Stop. That wasn't her. She's, Stop. She's getting found out. She's getting found out. I follow her on Instagram. That was okay? her. Okay. Yeah. Her, she, listen, she probably does get work done and that's fine, but not to the point where she still gives us a little bit of wrinkles. She still gives us like, listen, I'm not in my thirties. She's human. Yes. But I love, she's. She's hot. She's your, is she your idol? Martha Stewart, you want to be like her? Um, I do enjoy, I do enjoy her products at TJ Maxx. You know what I mean? Like You're a TJ Maxx or, huh? Oh my God. Yeah. That's my, that's my place. That's your jam. That's your target. Yes, TJ that's, Maxx. That's my mental health day is TJ Maxx. Is it? Yeah. You just go through the aisles, look at anything you would ever want in life you can find in this store. You want like some random seasonings you'll never find anywhere else. We got you. Right over there by the lentil chips, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just, they have TJ everything. TJ Maxx does have, the, they do have a lot. I don't, there's an, is there in, are they in LA? Am I crazy? Yeah, they're everywhere. Where? Although they are shutting down, because yeah. there was one on Ventura and Sherman Oaks, close that one down. There like one was in Tarzana, close that one down. Well, you got to, why don't you pa partner with TJ Maxx? I really should. I talk about them in my act. I, I think they should sponsor me or something. Well, listen up, Mr. and Mrs. Max. Thank you. If you are looking for a new spokesperson, you got one right here. Who looks like she speaks Spanish but doesn't. Which is good. It's going to appeal to so many markets. Yeah. Yeah, Because yeah. the hardcore um, Americans that are like a sp Spanish girl, and then you uh -huh. speak with such a, you know, without an accent, they'll go, Yeah, she's she all speaks right. really good English. She's pretty. I like yeah. her. She's cool. <laughs> but then the Latin community is going to be like, all right, I'd like to see her do an ad in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. you're going to have to have an overdub I'm of a voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to have an over, over, you'll have to have uh what is it? The AI, a chat GPT do it. Yeah. Have you used that? The AI no. stuff? Creepy, man. I hear about it. it, it, it it's it. awesome. It creeps me out. We did like write a, write a joke for me. Me and my buddy were doing write each other's jokes. You type in like write a joke of that Andrew Santino would tell. No. And you can actually, you can do it. You can do as bland as that. And you can do write a joke that Andrew Santino would tell in the South about Stop. chicken strips. Yeah. And it will do it. It's creepy. It's, it's so creepy. It gets humor. No, no. I mean, yeah, okay. yes and no. It's there, but it's almost extremely well formatted. So it, it's what's lost. Obviously, is the human element of, uh, of, of, um, of like bitey sarcasm and twisty sarcasm. It yeah. has some of it, but it just, it's not, it's what? not there yet. That's wild. It's gonna take over our jobs. Damn it. They're taking our jobs. These GPTs, man. They're coming over here. <laughs> these computers are taking our jobs. <laughs> it's gonna happen at some point. We're gonna be xed out. Comedians will be the first to go. Stop. Yeah, man. I hope you saved your shekels because we're out of here, dude. <laughs>
<laughs> I hope so. Oh, speaking of which, I wanted to ask you, and you don't have to, you don't have to be candid about it. You don't have to say it, but I'm always been curious. Did you monetize on the, 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 the nail salon bit? Did you make money on that on the internet? I don't even own it. I didn't put it up. That's somebody else's video put it up. This is what happened. That was Ice House. The Ice House did it, right? Well, I f it was filmed at the Ice House. Right. But there was a company at the time. That Comedy was TV. Comedy something. It wasn't dot I TV, remember there though. was one of those that was doing those at the time. And they were like, uh, come to the Ice House, do your set, do 10 minutes, and we'll pay you 25 bucks. And I was, $25. I was like, let me tell you, I need some Cheerios and some Top Ramen to survive. Yes, I'm going to do it. So I drove to the Ice House. I signed a little contract. And this is before YouTube. So they were like, this is going to go on Verizon cell phones. It was when we had flip phones. I remember. And they were like, for two ninety nine, people can download a comedy clip on their phone. They were going to charge people $2.99 <laughs> to download comedy clips. And yeah. so they were filming all these comedians doing these jokes that they were going to get Verizon customers to pay, to pay for. And then shortly after that, YouTube comes out. So they just uploaded all of this content to YouTube. And you got none of it. And I got not one penny. You got not a dime from that. Even in, it, it, have you ever tried to go legally after it at all? So here's the thing. I was just telling my manager recently, I was like, because I was like, you know, I signed a contract. I signed, you know, my life. They own the video. They don't own the joke, but they own that video. Sure. But I was like, you know what? I wonder if it says in perpetuity or just for like a year. Like, I don't know. I was 24 years old just signing a contract for $25 that I needed. Didn't think anything of it, yeah. No. So I'm like, I'm curious as to what that contract actually says. And I want to like look into Dig it. Dig into they it. They might owe me some money. A hundred million clicks? Let me tell you, I made not one penny off that. But what I did get was a long lasting career that here we are 16 years later. People still quote that joke. Yeah. People still come up to me and like there'll be a girl in my meet and greet that's like, oh my gosh, I used to listen to you in high school and I'm like wait we're not the same age like what <laughs> hold on <laughs> it's wild to think that I wrote a joke that is a part of pop culture in a way it's great that though how great people it's just cemented forever quote it like in their everyday life. like I still quote Wayne's World and Dumb totally. and Dumber and I'm aging myself I don't care like I those are part of my everyday same life no same. game on i can't tell you how many times they say game on she's okay my mom says that yeah. to me all the time <laughs> she's okay when she hits that car my brother <laughs> that's my favorite that's my favorite hi wayne yeah. hi and that she just smokes the front of that car anytime i'm on the phone with my brother and we're coming towards the end of our conversation and it gets a little quiet one of us will go big gulps huh Big well, gulps, all right, huh? from Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> well, see you later. Yeah. <laughs> Such a good line. And I'm like, that's crazy that here we are years later and I still quote that mo movie in my everyday life. Yeah. And there's somebody out there 16 years later still quoting my nail salon joke. How cool, in their though. Everyday How life. wonderful that's is wild. that? Yeah, that's beautiful. By the way, that Big Gulps line was improv. Do you know that? I don't know if you knew that. No. Yeah, Jim made that up on the spot. They had two extras out there. Um, that were, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's so funny. They were background guys and they were just, uh, and, uh, the movie that I shot was with Peter Fairley, the, one of the Fairley brothers that did that, that obviously did, you know, all my favorite movies as a uh -huh. kid. So working with him was just kind of super surreal, to be honest with you. It felt, it was like the weirdest thing on earth. And I asked a million questions and he answered all of them. And, you, uh, that's, I think internet knowledge about that. But the one thing that isn't internet knowledge is fa fairly the brothers, but Pete also, um, they put friends and family in movies a lot, mm -hmm. either as someone at the party or crossing through or being like, the car's ready. Yeah. And I said, I'll never forget, because Dumb and Dumber was the movie that made my childhood. I said to Pete, I said, I have a question, and I know you know already what I'm going to ask, because I was talking about background people. And I said, when Jim leaves the grocery store with the groceries he was supposed to get, you know, when he gets robbed by the little lady on the cart, <laughs> there's a man pissing against a wall in an alley and immediately before I finished it, he said, and I don't remember the guy's name, but let's just say it's like Bob Johnson. And he was okay. like, Bob Johnson. And I go, yeah, and he goes, high school, buddy. And I said, oh. I knew it. So he would place little friends of his yeah. throughout the movie doing little tiny things. And he still does it in this movie that we did today. We have his high school, two of his high school friends, three of his high school friends. I love it. Yeah, I thought that that's the part of the business that I'm actually proud of that I think is cool. And that kind of stuff, like what you're saying, the nostalgia for people remembering your bits and showing that kind of love. 
those things make all the negative stuff in the business mm -hmm. so wonderful. When you meet that person in line at the meet and greet mm -hmm. that gives you that piece of them, it's, you're like, this is why this is amazing. Yeah. Because truly, like, we've been doing meet and greets on the road, and you hear some amazing stuff from people that are, you help me get through really tough times. Yeah. To, uh, and even just people being like, we love you, man. We listen to you yeah. together. We have brothers and sisters sometimes where the sister's yeah. like, I showed him and now he likes you guys. And mm -hmm. like those things really do, uh, they make you proud of what you did. Yeah. More than anything you've ever achieved. Yeah. All the all the other stuff is kind of, it's icing on the cake. That's totally. What, that's what I say. I say we get to eat cake for a yeah. living. You're eating cake, literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other stuff is just icing. If, if it happens to, if your special happens to continue to grow your career, mm -hmm. that's icing. Right. You've already made you've already had the cake, baby. It's you know. Not to take not to get morbid about it. Oh, here is, we go. Let's get dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is something I think about sometimes. Angela, I killed a guy when I was uh, 19 <laughs> in my dad's shed. When if you like come back to a city and you have like regular fans in the city and they always come back, right? Mm -hmm. So I remember one, I have a big fear of death, period. Why? Um, I, Did somebody die when you were young? I think so. When I was in second grade, my best friend died in a car accident, and I oh think that just God. kicked it off for me. I, I think that's what it was. Yeah. It was my first funeral I went to. Second like, grade? Yeah. I could still, like, hear the song uh, that played at her funeral. It was her favorite song. There was pink and purple balloons everywhere because I was wearing her favorite colors. Oh. And they played this song, I think we're alone now. It there doesn't, doesn't seem, seem to be, be anyone around. That was her favorite dun, song. Dun, 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 yeah. Now. And so it was just playing like on repeat at her funeral. Like, I think that's what it was for me. So I've always had this fear of death my whole life. And something that really hits for me is like, I go to a city and there's this one city in particular, this couple, they would always come to my show. They always sit in the front and they always come to the meet and greet. They always get that VIP ticket. And then one year she came by herself no. because her husband passed away. No. And, and I hear stories like that, like, Hey, we all came. My sister was supposed to be here, but she died in a car accident, Ugh. like, you know, a few months ago, yeah. but we all still came to your show. And that always gets to me because I think about there was somebody on this earth living life that was like a fan of mine that was excited to come to my show, that I made laugh, that I brought joy, that I was a part of being medicine in their life in some way. And they're gone and they're no longer here. Mm. And that kind of like, puts things into perspective for me how life is fleeting and the importance of what we do you know and so like not to get dark but I I think about that as well like there was somebody on this earth who knew who I was and they were a fan and and they laughed at the things that I said and they're not here anymore let me give you the glass half full version of that too. okay because okay. that can be quite dark but I'm in a good mood today okay good I I, I did I'm not making this about me, I, but I did uh, the 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 kind of core root of my special was I just want I called a cheeseburger because I said I went through a, a traumatic time and I just wanted to be a cheeseburger. I just want people to enjoy me right now while they have me. I don't really care about living forever, mm -hmm. and I'm more comfortable with the idea of like this this doesn't last forever. So have fun now. Who cares? Mm -hmm. And genuinely, I take a lot of solace in the fact that it's like if I can give you joy now, mm. that's good for me. That's that mm -hmm. to me, it's almost like thinking about what's going to happen later or what's to come or what does it look like when it's all over? Who gives a shit? Mm -hmm. Because you give somebody joy now. Yeah, that's good enough. I feel like yeah. that's good enough. That's wonderful enough where time is going to pass and no one's going to remember us in, in a thousand years. Mm -hmm. So then do it now. There's a great book. I always recommend some uh, S.U.M. Some is such a good book. And it's kind of about that, about like. What life are you looking to have? Are you mm. looking for this afterlife? Or are you kind of looking to live in it now, enjoy it now? Because you'd rather have it now than any yeah. other time. Because the other time is unknown. This is known. So yeah. gamble with the known, baby. Yeah. Have fun. I love that. Eat it now. Have fun. Drink it. Smoke it. Take the trip. Fall in love. You know, yell at your enemies. <laughs> do whatever <laughs> makes you feel good. <laughs> like, do the thing now. It's because you've brought enough joy. So I, I know what you're saying, too. I do have those things. But... I've started, maybe it's where I am in my life that I've gone, you know what, dude, I, I, I if, if this makes them feel good now, mm. good. This is all I really need. I look at it like, uh, this is a easy metaphor. I was talking to a friend about, you know, um, what's coming next or the future in our lives about a thing that was happening to him. And 
I said, you know what's really interesting about you is you kind of look at, when I was a kid, I used to have to shovel the driveway. Mm. all the t- And I hated it. And uh, I used to think if you stood out there and you look at a driveway full of snow, you'd go, God damn it, so much to do. And it's overwhelming. Mm-hmm. But if you really like put up your little your little hoodie and you look down at the snow in front of you and you just take little chunks at a time, at no time, then you're done with the driveway. Mm-hmm. So if you just do the thing in front of you, just chunks in front of you, chunks mm-hmm. in front of you, instead of being like, what is it going to be like when the yeah. driveway is done? Yeah. Who cares? You're yeah. good now. It's like this. Like, this is it. This uh-huh. is it for now. Yeah. What's going to happen when she, who cares? Yeah. We'll figure it out. And if we don't, it's okay. Yeah. Look at you. You turned out fine. That's what I'm saying. You turned out fine. And you lost your friend when you were in second grade. Mm-hmm. And you're still holding on to some of it. Yeah. And by the way, I'm definitely going to play I Think We're Alone Now to end this episode. <laughs> No, I don't have that. I can't afford the rights. What am I saying? <laughs> but we'll sing it. We'll sing it out. Yeah, you know what? That is probably the best way to, to get out. Second grade, my immediately thought, I thought, in second grade, what would have been a song that would have played at my funeral as dark as that sounds? That was my brain went immediately to that. Probably <laughs> Trying to, like, to find your funeral song? Yeah, what would have been in second grade? Probably MC Hammer. Imagine, can't touch this. But an open casket, can't touch this. <laughs> Everyone's like, please back up away from the casket. That would have been my song. MC Hammer's The Adams Family version. Remember his? Uh-uh, what is this? Oh, my god! What are you talking about? He did a song, The Adams Family. Hey, no, 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 hey. No. Really? He yeah, did? Yeah, he was part of the soundtrack a long time ago. I don't, why do I I'm not remember that? I don't know. You're old by, by like a year and a half. <laughs> you're barely older than me. Don't talk like you're this old, wise oracle. <laughs> I'm older than you. And by the way, I do, you did show your age because for everybody who wants to know at home, we started a little bit late, to, late today because Angela ended up at the zoo, at the LA Zoo, which is almost impossible. People that live here don't even know how to get there. And she ended up there on accident driving around the zoo. I know when, you, when, when oh, you're, God. when you're, uh, what, do, what do I say? I don't even know how to say it. Is assistant the right word? Yeah, Danielle. Because uh-huh. sometimes people don't say use the word assistant sure. anymore. Like nah, it's diminutive or something. It's whatever. She's my assistant. She's my road manager your as homie. well. Your yeah. road man. Your home your home girl. Yeah. She said, I don't know how she got lost. Did you plug it into the map or or directly click the link? And immediately I thought, What is she? What, what are you, my dad? Plugging it into the <laughs> I put it into the thing and I got uh, somehow I'm in Temecula. <laughs> I printed out my map quest. Yeah. And it took me here. This says these roads have been closed for 30 <laughs> years. But I but but I get it. I get it. That's why when she when she was like, it's, she's like, I'm saying it's totally fine. I totally understand. But ending up by the zoo made me laugh because I thought, I haven't been there on purpose in a long time. Because once you go once, yeah. you never go to the LA zoo ever again. Because it's it's a sad, sad zoo. San Why? Diego, globally renowned as one of the yeah. best zoos in the world. Just 300 miles north, LA, worst zoo you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Saddest zoo you've ever seen in your life. It's the tough, tough Have zoo. Have you ever gone on the hike to see the old zoo? Yeah, I love the old zoo. It's really cool. That's yeah. nice and creepy. I like a little creepy. I like, I like, I like the creep. creepiness. That mm-hmm. should just be our zoo. Yeah. <laughs> we, we should just have a creepy zoo, an old, creepy, haunted zoo. And I grew up going, when I was a kid in Chicago, we would go to Lincoln Park Zoo, which... It still, I think, I hope I'm right, but to this day, if back then was free. It was a free zoo. You could just walk in at any point, wow. go see the zoo when you were a kid. Yeah, it was free because it was city funded. I think these zoos now are probably, you know, charging an arm and a leg to go yeah. see animals trapped. Yeah. <laughs> but it was free, and I always thought that was crazy. So then when I got older, I thought, are, are zoos always free everywhere? And then you go over no. and you're like, oh, no, they're Mm-mm. not. That's not a thing at all. That was just... Chicago Park District must have paid for it. Yeah, in San Jose, we we had like a petting zoo. That would have like goats and stuff like that. I don't but like goats. We didn't have like I the don't big like fancy goats. They, they creep me out. You wouldn't do goat yoga? I don't want to be near them things. I don't know what it is about them, but they're, you know how people don't like clowns? I don't like goats. That's funny. Goats are my clowns. <laughs> uh, they're, ah, the way they, it sounds painful. It sounds like they're always begging. It sounds like something's inside of them trying to get out. Do you know that I was a clown um, when I was trying to come up in the entertainment industry? Shut up. I was a party clown. Did you go to clown school? No. You were, you just went to parties and was and you dressed up like a clown. So I it was a princess party company and I thought I was gonna be like Jasmine or like <laughs> Belle or somebody. <laughs> oh, they're like, Put on the clown suit, kid. And they're like, no, we already got the princess, but we do need a clown. <laughs> Nose hair. I was makeup. the like creepy eighteen hundreds porcelain doll clown. You oh know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I was, I was the one that sits on your grandma's shelf that like follows you with its eyes. I was that clown. Yeah, the ones that stare off. Yeah. What were those things called that, that grandmas would always collect? They were like little porcelain things. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, oh my God. Something precious moments. Precious moments. That's exactly yes. those things I hated. Yeah. That and bronze shoes. You know, like when what? they would dip baby oh, shoes. Yeah. I always Weird. hated that when I go in a bathroom. Like, there's a little. And pinch. it has like the bronze lace. I did not like that. <laughs> I don't know why they plated the shoes, but every time you go to somebody's house and their grandmother. <laughs> they would always have plated kids' shoes, and you're like, "What is this?" And it smells for? like mothballs in the it, house. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> did your grandma? Did your grandparents have plastic furniture? Oh yeah. Plastic furniture. My yeah, grand. My grandmother wrapped the would wrap the um, uh, lampshades. That's how. Uh-huh. That's how penny pinching. They. Yeah. She'd wrap the lampshades. The couches would <laughs> always be wrapped. Uh, and also, if we had if we ate dinner at the dinner table, they would have the seats were wrapped, but the backs you could take off. You could take the oh. we on the on the back of the chair was wood was nice wood but you could take off the covering just for dinner but you had to put it back on. We had a nice tablecloth. Is it my Nina's house still currently right now mm-hmm. in San Jose? It'll be a nice tablecloth with the plastic over it. Yeah, God bless. Yeah, she's still alive. My Nina, my godmother. Oh, yeah. I thought. Oh, okay, okay. My grandmother like, passed. I was like, "Was your grandmother a thousand yeah. years old? As <laughs> no. old as you are?" Yeah, my you grandma dinosaur. Passed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got none left, and you know what? I miss them like crazy. But to take it back to a happy, dark place, they lived a great life. alone, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? This is the best opportunity for this, so I'll tell you. A, I appreciate you being here. I can't wait to see what this baby looks like when it comes out. You let me know if it's ugly or not. Okay, I totally will. Yep. Uh, B, for everybody listening at home, do yourself a favor and go watch her special right now. We also are going to put it in the, in the description down below. So it's easy to find for people that are like, well, I don't know. What it's in the description. All you do is click on it. You just click more. You don't have to put it in your maps it. or anything. Yeah, you don't have to load it up in your maps and get lost <laughs> at the zoo. Uh, go watch her special. Also, go grab your book. That's available as well. Yeah. Go on Amazon, I'm sure has it. I shouldn't plug Amazon because people don't like them anymore, I guess. But whatever. They got canceled? I think I think Bezos is skirting on uh, uh, t- a tyrannical monopolizer. Oh. I think that guy's, well, dude, come on. You, it's uh, like so rich, too rich. And we're all yeah, like yeah, Amazonians yeah. now. We all are like yeah. subject to the Amazon. So they're shutting down. You know why TJ Maxx is shutting down, my friend? Amazon. Am- that's yeah. true. That yeah. is so, true. Shoot. I yeah, do it's use a bummer, Amazon. but I use it every day. What do you mean? There's a package every now day. at my front door. I got a ring every notification. Day. The guy literally like every day is like, back again. And your wife's like, I got it. Don't worry. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. What's in there? <laughs> more stuff for the more Dyson hair products. <laughs> more vacuum hair things. Um, so go get her book. Go watch the special on YouTube. It's available right now. Um, can't wait to see this baby that you're going to obviously name Andrea after me. Mm. <laughs> Look in that camera right there. We end the episode the same way with one word or one phrase. Okay. Uh, but you can make it unique to yourself however you want it. It's going to end the episode in that camera. However you want to end the episode, it's up to you right now. When you're ready, go ahead. One word. Or one phrase. Or one phrase. Oh, pressure. You couldn't have told me before so I could think it through. Nah, you're a comedian, dude. You know better than this. You have to get on the spot, gun oh. to your head. One word or one phrase. And you one... have to hold your belly while you do it. Well, that's already going to happen. Um, big gulps, huh? Perfect. <laughs> In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers.